Uh, and another guy who brings the heat, Joe DeGeneva, joining us right now, legal analyst and former U.S. attorney to the District of Columbia. Joe, good morning. Great to have you back. Good morning. All right, sir. So, uh, so much transpired last week on the legal front. Um, I want to start with the Peter Strzok hearing that we all got to watch last week, Thursday. There was a smug showing by the disgraced FBI official, uh, but it stretched on for many hours. And I want to know, what, what were your takeaways from that hearing? Uh, Strzok is obviously Comey's illegitimate son. Uh, he has the same arrogance and sneering condescension that made Comey such a star in America's living room uh, struck as Comey's legacy, along with uh, 12 other people at the senior levels of the FBI who have been reprimanded, moved, fired, disgraced, lost their security clearances. Um, struck is the poster child for everything that James Comey created and how he ruined a once great law enforcement agency. Sad to say, his successor, Chris Ray, is not up to the job of fixing it. And so the Bureau continues to drift with its face being Peter Strzok. How about that for good government? You know, with, with an official like this, a law enforcement official expressing his opinion and such contempt for the subjects of his investigations, it left me wondering, because I haven't been in law enforcement, is there anything typical about that whatsoever? I mean, are there yeah. law enforcement officials who practice this way? Because his insistence was, hey, look, those were my personal opinions. Yeah. They didn't affect my work at all. Yeah, well, let's, let's stop this nonsense right now. Uh, Peter Strzok does not represent the way people conduct themselves as federal agents. If they do conduct themselves that way, they are immediately removed from investigations. Now, I have heard idiots on the, in the news media and not in the news media say, well, where is the proof of his bias? The proof is the text messages themselves. People act as if the text messages are simply things that were thrown into the ether and had no effect. His pathetic lying about the fact that his strongly held animus toward the president-elect Donald J. Trump had nothing to do with his investigation is insane. He would be automatically removed from any federal investigation in a normal agency. The Bureau was not a normal agency under James Comey and his senior leadership. So uh, Michael Horowitz's conclusion that there was no evidence that his bias actually affected prosecutorial decisions is nonsensical. I, I don't know what Michael Horowitz is thinking. He completely rejected all analytical skills that prosecutors use in determining bias. The best evidence of Peter Strzok's bias are his text messages, for God's sakes. And Joe, I agree with you. And this is Joe Concha, a media reporter of The Hill. I'm filling in as a guest host today. How are you? Uh, I'm thrilled. The rest of the country is not doing so well. Yeah, well, I agree with you. everything you said as far as bias. It's there in black and white. Uh, I've always made the argument that I always hear that uh, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page were lovers. I'm convinced that there were, was no physical contact whatsoever. Because you look at these texts, Vince. I mean, I don't see anything that talks about going to dinner or romance or anything. It's all about Donald J. Trump in terms of their animus towards him. I'm curious, though, to get your thoughts on the questioning by Louis Gohmert in going after Strzok and his marriage and looking into his wife's eyes and so innocently and, and saying that he was never cheating on her. Do you think that that distracted from the overall point and, and was a little bit overboard on the representative's part? Well, I wouldn't have done it, but, you know, I'm not Louis Gohmert. And the bottom line is this. The extramarital affair uh, subjected Strzok to compromise by foreign intelligence services. That was Great Louis' point. point. He made it right. He didn't we didn't make it the way I would have made it. But Louis' point was, if you are the head of counterintelligence, if you are handling major cases for the FBI, if you're having an affair with another FBI employee, at least that's the one we know about, uh, Lisa Page, then you are subject to extortion uh, by a foreign intelligence service. That's the point of all of this. And why he's still on the payroll, the answer is very simple. He is privy to great amounts of of counterintelligence information and they actually need him for analytical purposes in some cases at least to talk to him and he has to keep his clearance for purposes of testimony so they can lean on him not to say things that they don't want him to say i mean you know when all is said and done this is the sorriest period in the history of the fbi and for people to go out and listen to james comey give a lecture on ethics i must say um, it's cognitive dissonance 
at its in the highest order. I want to ask you about Rod Rosenstein, who we've talked about here many times. Uh, on Friday, he comes out and makes a declaration that 12 Russians have now been indicted in the Mueller investigation uh, for their role in hacking or gaining access to uh, Democratic Party emails and then subsequently <laughs> releasing them to the American public. I should point out again, nobody's disputed the factual accuracy of any of those emails. They're just concerned about, of course, the meddling by getting access to them and then disseminating them. What did you make of Rod Rosenstein's announcement? Um, uh, full of sound and fury and signifying nothing. He took the opportunity. This was a political gesture to help save his fanny. Uh, you'll notice that Robert Mueller never holds a news conference. He gives it to Rod to give it the imprimatur that Rod is in charge of this. Everything's kosher. It's wonderful. Having a great time. Uh, this, this indictment means nothing. Uh, these people are never going to be arrested. They're never going to be extradited back to the United States, and there's a good reason for that. The United States does not have an extradition treaty with Russia. Did you hear anybody say that on any news shows over the weekend? Answer, no. Both the reporters and the, and the guests are all idiots. There is no extradition treaty with Russia. There never has been an extradition treaty with Russia. These people aren't coming back. Why did he do this? He did this to help Bob Mueller look like he's doing something. By the way, all of this information in this indictment was in the Nunes report. That's right. From March, well, for a year and a half, the House Intelligence Committee has had all of this information. And why has Rod Rosenstein refused to declassify the House Intelligence Committee report, which had all this information? The answer is they didn't want to give Nunes credit. And it's just, it, you know, Rosenstein is a monster. He is an accident of history created by the idiots in the Bush administration who were on the transition team in the Justice Department and gave us Rod Rosenstein and Chris Wray, two lightweights who shouldn't be in charge of anything. Don't give them an ice cream cone. They're going to spill it. Joe, it's Joe Concha again. I, I'm curious, as this Mueller investigation goes on, and we're now well past one year, we're, we're at 15, we're at 16 months, it, it seems that polls are dropping in terms of Mueller's favorability. And I keep thinking of Ken Starr in the late 90s and how that dragged on, and the American people became impatient, either put up or shut up as far as, I get the indictments of Russians, but where is the connection back to this administration in terms of campaign officials or the president himself? And it seems that Robert Mueller needs to wrap this up. I'm not saying today, tomorrow, or next week, but at least by the end of the summer, before the midterms, because the American people, I mean, I'm seeing a political poll that shows that only 24% of uh, Republicans approve of right. Mueller and only 33% overall respectively approve of Mueller right now. We only have 15 seconds. Go ahead, John. The bottom line is that the indictment on Friday was designed to prop up Mueller for no good reason. Uh, he, he, There is no connection. There was no collusion. There is no Trump violation of law. This is a joke. It should end. It's never been worth it. Rosenstein created this monster because he was embarrassed by the fact that the president told Lester Holt he was going to fire Comey anyway because of the Russia probe. Right. I would have fired Rod Rosenstein that day, but the president knows he can't do that because of the political firestorm. Right. If I were Rod, I'd keep my bags packed. Joe DeGeneva, always with a clear point of view. Thank you for sharing with you us bet. this morning.